What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Phnom Penh Po. Located about 12 kilometers outside of Battambang City, Phnom Penh Po is a natural and historical site famous for the killing caves up top and the bat caves down below. Every evening, millions of bats fly out of here at the exact same time and tourists flock to this destination to witness this. But that's not what this video is about. I'm going to be mainly focusing on the life of my uncle Chia who lives in Phnom Penh Po. This is my uncle's house. Uh, it's a pretty nice house. He's been here for several years. Uh, this is his second floor balcony. There's two rooms up here. I've been sleeping here, but I also have room right here, which I don't know. I didn't want to sleep in this room. It just, there's no AC and it's kind of just enclosed. So uh, I've been sleeping out here on the balcony in a hammock. But at night, it's pretty cool up here and there aren't too many mosquitoes. I feel like the mosquitoes are all at the lower level because when we're hanging out and um, eating dinner at night, I, I get bit up pretty good, but I haven't really felt too many mosquitoes up here. But I've been getting really good sleep up here compared to the last couple of days. I went for a run this morning up to Phnom Penh Po. Running eight miles on flat surface, no problem. Running even one mile on an incline is freaking difficult. That was a freaking hard hill. I have a lot more to go. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Okay. <sighs> this place is freaking creepy when no one's here. <sighs> of course there's a dog. <laughs> hey. Go! Go! <laughs> oh yeah, it's a spectacular view. Whew. You can actually see Phnom Penh Po from his balcony back here. And right there it is. I ran all the way up top there. And there's a bathroom over here as well. Okay. He has another bathroom down here. And then a kitchen back here living room, his bedroom's here, and then his wife's sewing station. She actually is, uh, she makes dresses. For those of you that don't know, my uncle is actually a deportee from the U.S. He was deported back in 2014. And I'll give you the entire story a little bit later if you're curious about what happened. So stick around. Bamboo. Oh, you got the bamboo? Yeah. It's my uncle Chia. Hello. Uncle Chia. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good. We're gonna have a um, call. Call. Call through tonight. Chuk. With the piang. With John. With the piang. All right. And he got a, a fresh bamboo from from his garden, or from where from the house. The house. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I'm gonna go swing out there and okay. take a look at the. Well, I'll wait till you have a dead end. Dead dead end. All right. My parents actually owned this property back here. It's roughly the size of a football field and right now my uncle mainly uses it as a farm. He raises ducks in here, there's various fruit trees, he has a couple fish ponds and he recently built four cottages. They aren't quite finished yet but he plans on renting them out. And one of the reasons I came here is to check this place out and see if I could possibly build something. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Almost done. Almost done. Yes. Really cozy little cottages out here in the countryside of Phnom Penh Po. This could potentially be the site of my new uh, eco resort slash bar. <laughs> yeah, you can do anything here. In my opinion, with the proximity to a major tourist attraction and Battambang City itself, I think there's a really good opportunity to do something here. I just don't know exactly what I want to do yet. If you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them, so comment down below. And if you really enjoy the content that I'm making and you want to support the channel so I can do more of this, click on the link and buy me a beer.
Okay. Did it come out? Got stuck. What do you do with this? Uh, for fish and uh, chicken. Oh, feed uh, it and you mix up with them. Um, what is it, palm? That's the banana. Oh, banana. My uncle typically begins his day by feeding his fish, ducks, and chickens. And here he's grinding up banana tree to mix with the feed. Oh, okay, I see. So he's mixing the banana tree, shredded banana tree with the chicken food. Same with the fish food. The banana tree good for them? Oh yeah, yeah. Real good. It's safe on uh, money and it's mm. good for them. And Let's go check out the fish thing. Did Tomo try it? 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 Tomo try I believe his name is Dean, about three years old, and I actually had no idea he had a son until I uh, arrived. This is this are uh tip like home mm -hmm. and catfish is here. But they come from there. Catfish. Yeah. These are piranha and um called three um they pran. Yeah, the pa. Yeah. Behind his house, my uncle keeps his chickens, and he has some eel ponds back here, as well as a bunch of other various fruit trees. That's the one that we got. Oh, those, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a plant maca. Khmer people, especially women, love to eat these types of fruits. They're really sour and go good with bal mate, which is a mixture of salt, hot pepper, garlic, and dried shrimps. If you let these get really ripe, do they get sweet? Uh, no, not really. Not really? A little bit sweeter. You would I wonder what the American name for these is. I don't know either. If you're watching and you know what the American name for this is, leave a comment below. Just play my cat. I don't know what the I don't know what the American name for this is. In the in the bamboo. Oh, it's in here. It's in here? Get a bucket. Clean. Get a long party. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> it's a hot cat. It's cat. slippery. <laughs> you can't catch them. Very slippery. <laughs> Small guy. No, he used to be big, but I he let it go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go back. That one eye. Boom. One eye. One up. One no. Oh, oh. small one there. Yeah. Boom. Boom. 
The big one we ate them all. Mm -hmm. Useful bait to catch um snakehead fish. Uh, Cut in half. Yeah. And took out a bone. <laughs> We're here for the food they haven't eaten yet. Feeding his animals and tending to the landscaping, picking and planting fruits and veggies. That sort of makes up most of his day. Uh, he's also fishing. He has a trap set up to catch crabs, fish, and snails right out front of his house. Two days that I haven't catched anything. So Fish. That's how it's slowing. No fish today. Get some eel bait. Ah. Eel bait. Uh, I'll see. Put out, take out the oil. Uh -huh. Put the crab in there. Oh, you take the crab. Oh. Just stick it in there. In yeah, there. Let's do two. I got so many crab in the way. Mm. And you'll come in the morning and see how it goes. Hmm. Stick it on the side. No. Like that. And then oh. crawl in. Now do it back in the old days. You use a bamboo. bamboo. Instead of plastic. <laughs> now use plastic too. It's easy to carry. More light. More light. Hmm. You can use the, the snail too. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything to hit on it. Oh, you crack open the snail. Yeah. I'm gonna check up in the morning, see what we got. Let's put it here together. I don't know where, but stick it somewhere. Hmm. Something like that. Make sure they can breathe when, when they get in. Huh. They'll be able to breathe in the last couple of days. Oh, really? This is a baby one. What is it? The puffish. Oh, puff blow, fish. blowfish. Oh. The, uh, the blowfish. Yeah. I like the way. guys. Here yeah, more puffish. They are baby. They hasn't puffed yet. Oh, look at this really tiny crab. Yeah, baby, baby crab. crab. Oh shit! Oh, no. <laughs> 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 Take a pull. <laughs> It didn't, it didn't puff yet. Yeah. 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 Oh, you call it, they call it blow. Yeah, that's a 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 Oh, oh, there it goes. There you go. What? What do you mean? Not long. It's not long. It's not long. It's not long. It's not long. You tip him, me. you tip him the me poom. Yeah, tip him the We're happy with him. Oh, no, he only made not. a $15 a month. No, I help him out. And no retirement. Yeah, I help him out. I, I don't mind helping out, man. I 
I appreciate his help. But he helped me a lot too with yeah, um, yeah. I'll take care of him. He tries to get everything done earlier in the day while it's still cool out because around noon it gets way too hot to be out and working. So most people that live out in the countryside around this time will hang out under the shade, maybe eat some lunch, have some beers, and just relax, chill out, wait for the afternoon rains to come and cool everything down. And joining us for lunch is my uncle's brother-in-law and his wife, who came here to not only enjoy lunch with us, but she's gonna cook me a special dinner. Yeah. But first, before the afternoon rains come, we hop on the motos and head out into the rice paddies to pick a special treat that all Khmer people love. What are these lotus? Huh? Look tulips. like lotus, lotus flowers. Tulips. 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 No, those aren't tulips. Lotus. Oh, you can you can buy a fresh lotus here, and she'll go out and pick it. Just like you have cherry pick. You can order it. You can pick it for you. What did it do with it? Eat them. Eat them. Oh, just nice, tasty. Freshly picked lotus seed. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it tastes like a sweet pea. If you get it for like a day or two, it tastes a little, little bit bitter. A little bit more bitter. But it's like no bitter. Not only are the lotus seeds pretty tasty, they help to prevent inflammation, lower glycemic index, enhance your kidney health, help stabilize your blood sugar levels, and aid in weight loss. Lotus seeds are very healthy. That's why Khmer people love it so much. It's like a snack. That's for snack? That's for snack. Mm. And I didn't get a shot of it, but the flowers of the lotus are actually very pretty and good for decorating. Right here. Right in this, this side. You can nail. Yeah. I have to admit though, the fresh ones are kind of a pain in the butt to eat. You have to peel them out of the lotus pods and then actually peel the seeds themselves. But you leave it like a day or two, mm -hmm. it tastes good. Mm -hmm. And the fresh ones get really bitter if you let them sit for too long. So you have to eat them right away. So now that we've had a little snack, a little appetizer, it's time for the main course. Here, my uncle's sister-in-law is making pork belly marinated in salt, garlic, and black pepper. And then we also got bok hong, which was purchased from a nearby vendor. And uh, we have two versions. We have the Thai version and Khmer version. <laughs> Mm. In Cambodia, especially out in the provinces, when you're having a meal and you see your neighbors walk past, it's customary to invite them to join you. So the May Poom, who lives right next door to my uncle and his family, have joined us for dinner. And in reality, it's not a whole lot different from what we do here in the States. It's just that most of the Khmer people here aren't living in the same village or neighborhood. So we have to call or text each other and say, hey, we're having a little cookout. Come on over, bring a case, bring some food. Let's hang out, 
chill, eat, drink, and be merry. And of course, you know, at some point, someone cracks open a bottle of something and the shots start flowing. It's uh, cure everything. Yeah, for your muscle pain. And mm, muscle pain, muscle aches, sleep good. Mm. Here's that Cambodian Jägermeister. Here, go right on. My birthday. All right, as promised, here is the full story of how my Uncle Chia got arrested and deported and then what happened immediately after. It is very long, but I thought the entire story was very interesting, so I'm just going to let this play out. In my case? Yeah, what, what got you deported? Oh, I was in um, between drug thing, ecstasy. Oh, ecstasy. I, I just worked, remember it's pills. Yeah, um, I, I was working in a casino, right? Um, I know someone that had it. Uh, but I caught in the middle of the um, investigation. Oh, you were in the middle of it? In, yeah, I got caught while they investigate the, the Chinese mafia. Right? Oh, and you're just a middleman. Not even a middleman, you just... Just started, like I, yeah. um, I, I said, I know the guy that sell it. And then mm -hmm. I... Um, I can get it from that guy and maybe I made like a few bucks off from that. Uh, oh, you were a middleman. Yeah. You're just passing it along. Yeah. What they catch you with? I think like um, 500, 5,000 or, or 2,000 actually. Like, yeah. You did jail time? Yeah, like a, a year. Jeez. And that was your first offense? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that my lawyer tried really try and get me, my public defender. Uh huh. Uh, he really tried to get me. Um, really? He wanted me to testify to say. Oh, that he wanted you to, to tell that, who it that was. That guy is my boss. I said. Oh. You mean my boss? He will admit that he's my. I, I don't even know him. Yeah. I saw him like in a casino. We like we ran into each other. Right. You didn't. You really didn't know. We him. don't know him. I know him, but we don't hang out. We just Shit. like. If you said. This is a small casino. How you walk to a Kmart? Mm -hmm. I was bumming to you like a. a yeah, yeah, yeah. Coworker, right? Yeah. And we, and we say hi, hello. But he wants you to say that's my boss, my. Uh, my boss. The guy. Yeah. So that they could get, catch him. The cat, but, yeah, but they didn't catch him. But I can't. If I, he's if the I Chinese say, mafia. The Chinese mafia. But I Shit, know. you said that they would have. They, they, uh, the shrimp boy they killed you. They, the shrimp boy and the uh, wolf two Oh really? They, they like they everywhere in the United States. Yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, yeah. So he was trying to get you to like plea yeah, bargain and yeah, that, uh, hey, snitch him out. Um, yeah. I, said, I, said, I said, you want me to lie? I, said, I can't say that he's my boss because I, I don't even know him. I, yeah. I keep denying it. Uh -huh. I don't. And he gets like less time. Like maybe never in a year. Yeah. I mean at that point it doesn't matter because but if I lie, my whole family might be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, they'll go after your family. But they got the, the snitch that um, room for uh, FBI, the FBI oh, really? is Asian too. So it was a whole, like... The whole day of operation, but I just got caught into it. It was just an FBI yeah. type. Oh man, no wonder. Yeah, I, they, I heard it was just, I just heard pills. They've been spying on me, and mm -hmm. I, then I go in McDonald's and I got something in the bag. I wouldn't buy something to eat. Right. And then you got, what, how old were you in jail? How old? Like 20 something? No, that's just like what? 10 years? 8 years? 8, 9 years ago. Oh, is that right? Okay. 2014. Oh. 15, 14. Why did it seem so 2014. long ago? 2014. They took year in immigration holding. Oh, so they caught you and then the next year they they deported you? Yeah. In 2015? Mm -hmm. Mm. But I was, I was doing well. Mm. Um, I took um, 364 days and <laughs> eligible for the portable. I took that, but if I took like two years, I don't get for it. I didn't think that far. Mm. If so, I took a two year, then you can get put me. What do you mean? Like if you took time, more time in prison. Really? Why? I don't know. It's a bargaining thing. Oh. But so I, if you took more time, you could have stayed in the U.S. Yeah, but I wasn't thinking. You wanted me. to get out of jail. I didn't want to go to jail. And you'd get out of jail, and then I can't get. If I take that short deal, I can't get the put. Huh. 
But the boy is how you were getting me. And then when you got deported, what happened? They just came, got, got you, and took you away? Uh, no, they just. They let me go to the airport, and uh, the immigration here, they picked me up and do some fingerprint, and they let the family or someone that I knew come pick me up. Mm. Do what I'm free. Yep. Mm. But the immigration that took me out, they want money for me too. And no, no, I mean like over there, after you got out of jail, they took you right to... to the immigration pick you up in a van. Pick you up in a yeah, van, yeah. and they took you to the airport. Uh -huh. And they next to me at the airport. And then you can't see your family or anything? No, nothing. nothing. Just right from jail to... We just right to the airport and to the... Cambodia. Did you have any? Like, did they give you anything? Like my clothes from prison, my wallet or anything? No, no. Well, I had to hide my money because the government here took my cash. Yeah, here. He took. They even took my um, uh, codeine medicine. I tell them, really? They asked me what's this? That, that's my painkiller. Uh -huh. They didn't give. They took it. Yeah. Uh, they took everything. Huh? Uh, 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 no. And when they when you came here then the first day you were in Phnom Penh. No. Oh yeah yeah I was in Phnom Penh. Um I was staying like a they they had a place for me to stay mm. to crash for be whatever I long I need to stay. Mm. But I couldn't stay but I had a family member that picked me up. Mm. Like a few hours later, yeah. The paperman process they picked me up and finger print it and free to go home. Mm. I was stressed out, man. Wait, where, so where would you go after? I stay. I ran the room in two months in Phnom Penh. In Phnom Penh, and then and then you went. Okay. And then you went to uh, Kampung. No, I went to here to visit. A friend asked me to come visit here? him. Yeah, the Who's Bo? Oh, oh yeah. The little short guy. He yeah, asked yeah. me to come visit him, and I saw he's having a land. Uh, well, I bought the land right away. Uh, That's why. This here, where we're at now. I could have stayed in Phnom Penh, but um, I couldn't. I win. Hey, Ban Moy. Ban Moy. Maybe more, maybe more, maybe a car. Land. Is it a car? Land? <laughs> Oh, so that okay. I stay like a two month. But I couldn't. Mm. I couldn't handle it. Why? The weather. <laughs> I come in on in November. Uh -huh. That's when the rainy season. Oh. Um, it's, it's hot. All stuffy and you see the rats and cockroaches start. Yeah. See ya. How are you? No, that's it. Not the car. So, I thought you were here longer then. Uh, 2016, almost 16. 15, I'd say 15. <laughs> Wait, I, my first time I came was 2016. You just got here. I just got here. Oh, shit. Why did I think you were here so long? The whole time I thought you were here longer. I was case like 2013. Mm. They let me up the hook for a year to stay before I go to prison. So to take care of my son in the hospital for oh, having cancer. Uh -huh. So let me go up for a year and a year is in prison and a year at the immigration. So mm. three years but the first year didn't count. Mm. They put me on an ankle monitor. Ankle monitor. I could have go bad but I would stay longer. Mm. <laughs> you you ask my uncle how when I flew down, I saw the, the old house with the, you know, what do you call it, the sign the the bowler. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that the roof, mm -hmm. man, it looks so sad, and man, this is how it lived, like Mexico. Yeah. Look from up the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you seem to be doing okay now. Well, you like got, it here? I like it now, but the thing is, I got lucky. Is I got your mom, your dad helped me out to build a house. Yeah. If they even help me, I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. Be, I don't know what. Do you know any other deportees that? Yeah. That got like fucked up. And yeah, I know a lot, but I don't know what to do with them. Yeah. yeah.
I have, I try to help the guy to stay with me, but he's lying a lot, he's a lot, this and that, oh my, no family, nobody help me, this and that. And I caught him on the phone and he's, you know, push it a lot. Oh, he's bullshitting you. I help him a lot, I lend him money, help him do this and that, but he's pushing it a lot. He's lying to you. I met him in prison, he played cards. I played poker, I made a lot of poker. So he's, a, lot of he's poker. a hustler. He wasn't a hustler, but I played and I mm -hmm. made a lot of I made a lot of winning. Yeah. So what I got, I left it to him. Oh, really? But the thing is, he lied to me a lot and mm. when he get here. He, I let him stay with me. Mm. A few guys I let stay with him, but they, like, they, just, they, they don't change. Mm. They don't change. Mm -hmm. To me, I want nothing to do with them because I'm free. I just want to, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. is on the list. He's on the list. But I don't think he's important anymore. But this is just, I'm just ran into a wrong president. Before. Yeah, he just had to <laughs> wrong place, wrong I time. Trump. Because I know I know a couple people that are on the list and they're still there. They're still there. Around the same time. Only Trump. Yeah.